Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. Today we're starting chapter 12 of IB Math Studies and this chapter is Pythagoras Theorem. So basically we're going to be talking about the infamous triangle theorem that's really everyone knows about but you may not know about it or you may have forgotten. So we're going to be reviewing everything about it and it's not a very difficult topic but there's definitely going to be a lot of questions that will get this topic really really complicated so let's actually start with the first picture which is this and this picture right here essentially summarizes the entire theorem giving you all of the required vocabulary that you need to know so if you have a triangle that is right a right angle triangle so this is 90 degrees uh, in each of these triangles you have three different sides and one of them is going to be called leg or short leg or leg A. So this is a short leg. And then we have the long leg. So basically we have two legs and we have something called hypotenuse, which is the longest side. So the way we usually express this is we, with the letters and this would be letter A, letter B and letter C. Now his theorem is really, really simple and it's been proven many, many times. There's actually over 200 different proofs from various people. Actually, one of the American presidents spent his free time not invading countries, but uh, trying to prove uh, Pythagorean theorem. And he did it many, many times. And so this is what the theorem says. If you have A side and you square that side, and then if you have B or B leg and you square that leg, their sum together will always be equal to the square of the hypotenuse or the third side. And one of the most effective uh, proofs of this theorem is actually uh, a, a GIF file or a GIF file or basically an animated file that I found on the internet. There's a website I'm going to post the link for in the description below. And this is a website that basically presents a lot of mathematical concepts in very, very, very easy to understand uh, pictures. And this is the website, but we're only looking for one picture and this is the picture right here. I'm actually going to zoom in on it just to explain it to you. So look at that, there is two squares on top and one big square on the bottom and this is a triangle. Basically, if you make two squares and you fill them with water and this square represents the square of the smaller leg and this square here represents the square of the bigger leg and you fill them with water, the volume, or I guess in this case, the area that is represented by the volume of water equals to the square of the big hypotenuse, the big side. And this is a very elegant way of demonstrating this, this idea. Now this all may sound not too complicated, so let's actually try an example. And this is an example from page, I believe it's page 351, example two. And this is what the example says, find the length of the third side uh, of the given triangle. So we have to find the third side of the given triangle and the side is right here. It's a little bit too small, but it's basically the smaller leg that we need to find. We know that the uh, bigger leg, the longer leg is five centimeters and the hypotenuse is six. So since a square plus b square equals to c square, we can then rewrite this as x square plus five square equals to six square. And what we do now is we take this number and we move it to the other side by changing its sign. And what you'll get is x square equals to six square minus five square or x square equals to 36 minus 25 minus 25 and x squared equals to 11. So now we just have to find the x by taking a square root of both sides and x here equals to square root of 11. Now, now the square root of 11 is actually an irrational number. It's a number that never ends and has no patterns. So we can actually leave this answer like this. If this was like square root of 16 or something, you would have to simplify this and square root of 16 is four. So you would have to write this as four, but because it's an irrational number, you can actually just leave it as a third, as, as a square root of 11. Okay, let's try something a little bit more challenging uh, using another geometric shape. And let's try this example eight from page 356. So this is a word problem. So here you actually have to try to draw a picture first. A rhombus has diagonals of length six and eight centimeters. Find the length of its sides. So this is where you have to try to recall what a rhombus is. Now rhombus is kind of similar to a square, except that its angles here are not 90 degrees. So these are not 90 degrees, but its sides are equal. And also a rhombus has diagonals that basically, um, they, they cross and they bisect each other. They basically create these sides that are equal. So this 
is equal to this and this is equal to this. And the other feature that a rhombus has is that all of its angles created by diagonals are now 90 degrees. So these are all 90 degree angles. So basically now we have four different right triangles. And what it says here is that the, um, the shorter diagonal is six centimeters. So this whole thing, this whole thing is six. And then this whole thing is eight. And what we need to do is find the length of its sides. Now, all of the sides of rhombus are equal, meaning that we just need to find one length, one side. So step number one here is to redraw this so that it actually makes sense. And what we have is, let's just draw one of the triangles. So we have a triangle with a longer leg, the longer leg right here. And this is actually half a diagonal, right? And then the diagonal is eight. So this is four. This right here is four. Then we have the shorter side. Let's actually use a different color. The shorter side right here. And this side is half of six, which is three. And lastly, we have our hypotenuse, which is basically the side. This is X and this is X. So we need to find the hypotenuse or the side of the rhombus. And here simply you have three square plus four square equals to X square. Or in other words, nine plus 16 equals to X square. X square is 25 and X or the side is five. And that's the answer. So all of the sides here are five. And if, if the question even asks you to find something like perimeter, you have to remember that you just have to add up the sides. So the perimeter here would be 20. So that's how you do these types of questions. So basically step number one here was to draw. So one is draw the figure. Step number two was uh, find the right triangles, find the right triangles. And step number three, apply the theorem. So apply the Pythagorean theorem to solve and find the missing sides. That's basically how you do these types of problems. It just, you need to remember the properties of various geometric figures. And this is something we'll be discussing more in detail in the next chapter as well. All right. So thank you for watching. Good luck to you and bye-bye.